Do you ever find yourself really busy and then at the end of the day or end of the week, you kind of go, well, I was really busy, but what did I really get done? And maybe you discover, I didn't really move my business forward this week. If this is happening to you, it's likely because you're doing busy work. Things that are keeping you busy in your business, but aren't necessarily moving you forward in a strategic way to reach your goals. Now, I've been thinking a lot about this because I'm preparing for my upcoming 2019 marketing strategy class where we're going to have people come together to create their plan for next year. And I thought about this as obviously we want people to leave that class being very clear about what they have to do and ensure that they don't get into busy work as they move forward in their goals. So there are four things that I think are the most important things that are going to help you get out of busy work and get into the work that is really going to move you forward. So let's get into it. So the first thing that you need to look at in order to not be on busy street all the time is to look at what are your highest priorities. What are the things that are the most important to you? Like the one or two things. And I know that you can think, well, I really want to do this and I really want to do this and I really want to do this and I really want to do that. And that's all wonderful. But oftentimes when we prioritize too many things, this is what happens. We get into busy work because we feel overwhelmed at all the things that have to happen. I think a lot of times people underestimate, I know I've done this, underestimate what it takes to make something happen. And if you're in your first few years of your business and you're creating a lot of new stuff and trying a lot of new things, or you just haven't mastered something yet, it's likely going to take you longer than you think. And so if you can take that into consideration as you're making your plan for the year or even for the quarter, then um, you're likely going to make a better decision around the things you really want to focus on. And think about it. If you decide on one or two priorities, then if by chance you're right and they don't take as long as you thought, great. Then you have more space to create from, but you're going to do it from a more, from a space of abundance and enjoying yourself versus um, feeling frustrated and in fear that none of it's going to get done. You know what I mean? So that's the first thing. Really find and discover what your highest priorities are. What do you really want to achieve next year? And if there's some projects around that, what are like the top two projects? or three, depending on how long they're going to take, um, that are your highest priority. And then just focus on those. Okay. The second question is about your profits. So one of the, my favorite analogies around profit is the, um, boulders, rocks, and pebbles or, or rocks, pebbles, and sand. Some people say, so, Basically, in your business, we all have rocks. There are these core big rocks that are our uh, largest profit centers. So for a lot of people in the coaching industry, for example, private coaching would be a rock. And then there are pebbles. And this is the, the next thing from a profit standpoint. And that might be a group program or, or a product that someone can buy online. And then there's sand. And that might be a book or... Um, or just a smaller priced item of some sort. And a lot of times what happens is we get caught up in trying to sell the pebbles in the sand. But if we give this example, um, let's say that the sand is a $10 product, the uh, pebble is a $100 product, and the rock is a $1,000 product. You can see how if you spend a lot of your time in the pebbles in the sand, your profit margins are going to be a lot less because you've got to sell to 10 people to make a to make a thousand dollars in the pebbles but you only have to sell to one person in the rock uh, category to make a thousand dollars and then you know you have to sell to a hundred in the sand 
So what ends up happening is you actually make your business more difficult than it needs to be um, to get to the financial goals that you have. So I want you to look at, you know, what are the rocks that bring you the most joy? Now, this is a thing that not all strategists necessarily talk about, which is the piece of joy. Because the thing is, even if a rock is the most profitable for you, if it's not a joyous journey there, that's going to make your business hard too. So choose the most profitable things that bring you joy that you want to focus on. And when you do that, you're going to enjoy growing your business and selling whatever it is that you have to sell. Because it really is just as easy to sell a $1,000 product as it is a $10 product. Sometimes it's just a little, it's actually easier to sell more expensive things because the buyer is so unique, you know who it is, and if you do your marketing right, then what's gonna happen is you're just gonna attract people who are like, yep, I'm in, let's do it. Um, Because they're looking for something specific. So that's your second thing. Discover what are your highest profit centers that bring you joy. Okay, the third thing that you need to do is to look at the three to five marketing strategies that are going to allow you to stay consistent in the marketplace. One of the biggest problems I've seen over the years is that people are super consistent and then something happens and then they fall off their marketing. Um, or they are a little consistent, they fall off. They're a little consistent, they fall off. And what happens is, I, I like the analogy of dating for business. If you if you date someone who's very consistent and then they kind of disappear, and then they're consistent and then they disappear, like you're likely not going to be dating that person for very long, right? So I want you to think of your customers and clients and your tribe as dating you. And you want to court them. So you can't just disappear because this is the person you want to marry, let's say, and you want to stick with it. So you have to create a marketing strategy that you're actually going to be able to stick to. Now, we, we're going to go through this in the, the um, marketing class in greater detail because it's, it's, it's a lot longer than a blog post. But I will tell you this, um, choose a few things that you know you can stick to that challenge you but you still feel good with you know so if you're a really great writer and video freaks you out then start writing more um do the things that come the easiest to you but make sure you're doing something that challenges you i think that's the easiest way to go about it because what happens is if you keep if you choose things that really don't feel good to you, you're gonna make up every excuse in the book not to do them. And then you won't be consistent, and then your tribe are gonna go elsewhere for the services and products that you offer. And that's not what you want. You want them to come to you. The fourth thing that you can do to make sure that you stay off busy street and you really focus on getting things done is to make sure that you ask yourself every day, who do I need to be in order to get the results that I want? So this is the mindset piece around growing your business. One of the things I've learned in the last decade as an entrepreneur is that you need to become the person who can get the results that you're looking for, which means that you've got to grow if you want your business to grow. Your business will not grow without you. So every day you want to do some inner work around giving yourself permission to allow in more, to put yourself out there, to not worry what other people think, to to be that on top of the mountaintop screaming your message person. Uh, well, not maybe not screaming, but you know, to all those who will listen. And it's really, really important because if, if, if you don't put yourself out there consistently, your future clients can't find you, right? And there are people who are looking for what you have right now, right now, there are people looking for you. And, and although we've talked about these 
three pieces in terms of strategy and they're all very important. Even if you have those in place, but you're scared of putting yourself out there or you doubt yourself or you fear what other people will think, it doesn't, the other three don't even matter because your fear and doubt will override and you'll make excuses and you'll get back into busy street. We don't want that for you. I don't want that for you because I really believe if you have a dream in your heart, if you have a business that you're passionate about, it's because you're supposed to do it and because you have everything inside of you to do it because you have value to offer the world and that's the best gift that we can give everyone anyways is the value that we have to offer by being the best version of ourselves. So I want to encourage you as you are making your plans for the next year or the next quarter or heck this week, always come back to knowing, you know, who do I need to be? What do I need to believe? What do I need to let go of so that I can be courageous and brave and take this consistent action that is going to move me forward. All right, so those are my four steps. They're pretty big, <laughs> but they're the ones. If you do want help implementing this, go to jennifer-trust.com forward slash 2019 and join us for the marketing strategy class. And leave a comment and let me know what is the thing out of these four that you really need to focus on next year? What was most helpful for you? What will you change so that you get off busy street and that you move forward into building that business and the results that you really want. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.